Welcome back to our YouTube channel and in this video we're we'll talking about RC circuits. In our last video we talked about RS circuits which is a circuit that is solved using first order differential equation. And this is another first order circuit and which is RC circuit and it's similar to what we left there. So it won't be long here as we we'll just apply the ideas we use for RS circuits to solve RC circuits. Similarly, we have source free RC circuits and we also have driven RC circuits. And what do I mean by that? Source-free RC circuit means that there is no source, the capacitor is not driven, and therefore it responds naturally. So we also call it the natural response of a circuit. So let us have a circuit that has a resistor and a capacitor, also called the RC circuit. So this is the capacitor and this is the resistor, plus minus V, and this is the current going through it right so this is very very simple so what is the current they, they are in series right because they are in series the same current will go through them and uh, if we are to take the Kirchhoff's current law remember in RL circuits we use Kirchhoff's voltage law here let us apply Kirchhoff's current law to this top node I told you in uh, beginning videos that a node is a point in between two circuit elements right is a point in between so even if they not show you that this is a point you should know that a node is in between two circuit elements right so whenever you have two circuit elements there's a node in between them so when we apply kcl right to the circuit so what do we have the node voltage is v and of course this is a reference node right so what do we have the current in the capacitor is c dv dt and the current here is what v over r plus v over r equals zero like i told you when you are doing node analysis you assume that all the current is going out of the node and that is what i assumed here yeah. so if you divide through by c what do we have we have dv dt plus one over rc v equals to zero this is a first to that differential equation for an rc circuit and we have to solve this, solve this to get the natural response for an rc circuit this is very very simple we also apply separation of variables that is to separate the variables to get our answer so and how do we do that very simple applying separation of variables technique of solving first order differential equations let us bring this to the other side right we have the vdt is equals to minus one over rc v right so if you separate the variables we have what one over v dv is equals to minus one over rc dt so and we have to integrate both sides this will be v naught and this will be v and when we integrate this will be zero this will be t and we have what lean v from v naught to v equals to what minus one over rc t from zero to t and of course if we insert it we have lean v minus lean v naught equals to minus one over rc t right so by loss of log regime i can tell you that the left hand side will become lean v over v naught lean v over v naught equals what one over rc t so by loss of log reading again i can tell you that v over v naught must be equal to e raised to power minus one over rc t and therefore v of t is equals to v naught e raised to power minus 1 over rc t this is the natural response for an rc circuit and of course if you compare it to v naught e raised to power minus t over tau our time constant for an rc circuit is rc for an rs circuit it is what our tau is equals to l over r so know the difference and of course for an inductor rs circuit it is usually usually take note of the current why because the inductor usually refuses approach changes in current so the current is a very very important circuit parameter for an inductor while the voltage is a very very important circuit uh, parameter for a capacitor and of course we can solve an example with this so let us solve a question in this question we are going to find the voltage v at t is equals to 200 
microseconds. So right, we're going to find the voltage V when it is equals to 200 microseconds. So let us get the expression for V. That is very straightforward. So if you look at the circuit very well, you can see that there's a switch here. And uh, before T is equals to zero, the switch was closed. Then after T is equals to zero, the switch was opened. Right? So before the switch was closed, that is when T is less than zero. So what do we have? We have four ohms. Right? We have the 10, 10 microfarad capacitor. We have the two ohms here. Right? And of course, we have the source, the 9 volt source. 9 volts. So 2 ohms, 4 ohms. This is 10 microfarad. But I will remove this 10 microfarad capacitor. Why? Because there's a source here. There's a DC source here. And remember what I said that for an inductor, it turns an inductor to a short circuit. And an inductor behaves as a short circuit when there is a DC source. For a capacitor, it's based as an open circuit. So I will remove it. It's an open circuit. I can, I can only get the voltage on it and the current there is equal to zero. So plus or minus V. So how do I get the voltage here? That is V zero minus before the switch was opened. Is equal to what? Remember, because this is an open circuit, the current here will be equal to zero. So what does that mean? It means that the voltage V here it be equals to 9 volts. That's straightforward. It's equals to 9 volts. Why? Right? Because this resistor here is not taking any voltage drop from this 9 volts. So the voltage here I is equals to 0 and therefore V is also equals to 0. So then the voltage on this on this capacitor is what 9 volts. So which means that because the voltage of your capacitor doesn't change in instantaneous time, so it means that V of 0 itself is equals to 9 volts. So let's model the circuits for when the time switch was opened. So we have four ohms. When it was opened, it means that the source disappeared, right? Because the source is not connecting to the circuit again. So we have the 10 ohm microfarad capacitor, and we have the two ohms here, right? So we have 10 microfarad, the four ohms, and two ohms. So look at something here, right? So there's no source here. What does that mean? The only thing that will happen here is what natural response. So the natural response of this circuit is what V is equals to V naught what E raised to power, power minus T over R C. Right? So we already know what V naught is, 9 volts. So that's 9 volts. E raised to power minus T over what is R? R is the equivalent resistance, which is 6. 6 multiplied by 10 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 farad. And what would that give us? So that will give us 9 A raised to the power minus T over 60 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. Voltage. So the question I ask us to get. What's the voltage will be when T is equals to 200 microseconds? That is straightforward. You just put 200 microseconds inside this T. So what do we have? We have V of 200 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. It will be equal to what? 9 E raised to the power minus 200 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 over 60 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 volts. So this cancels this. 0 cancels 0. So we have 9 e raised to the power minus 10 over 3. That's the voltage, and that will give me 321.1 times 10 raised to the power minus 3 volts. So in a short form, I will say 321.1 millivolts. And that's straightforward. Very, very simple. Very, very simple. So if you have any question, please drop it under this video and I'll make sure I give you an answer. So let's me do an example on the complete response for an RC circuit. So you use the circuit to explain the complete response of a capacitor. This is the capacitor here, right? So in this circuit, I'm looking at getting the initial, right? The initial voltage of the capacitor, that is VC of zero, right? Then I'm looking forward to get the 
natural response that is let me call it vn and also the first response of the circuit so let's go there so the initial response of the circuit is when what is when t is less than zero right so if t is less than zero which means that this circuit will become a short circuit short circuit this will become a short circuit and the only source that will be acting is this so that is very very simple to get so what do we do we get the voltage on this capacitor due to this one milliampere so what we do is this is short circuit and therefore we have 25 kilo ohms right we have uh, 220 kilo ohms but i will turn it to just one circuit because it's in series and we have uh, an open circuit here why because we have a dc source a capacitor acts as an open circuit to dc source and of course we have a source here so this is 100 kilo ohms and this is 25 kilo ohms and this is one milli amperes so what am i looking for plus minus v so that is very very simple so you can see that this 25 kilo ohm and this 100 kilo ohm they are in parallel so if i solve that that is the r eq is what 100 times 25 over 100 plus 25 so which was 2500 over 125 so that will give me 20 right so that will be 20 ohms so of course which means that i will have 20 ohms in parallel to 1 milliampere i will have 20 ohms in parallel to 1 milliampere so this 20 ohm in parallel to one milliamperes and i'm looking for the voltage so how do i get the voltage this is one milliamperes right and this is 20 kilo ohms sorry it is in kilo ohms not in ohms so if i do that v of zero will be what one milliampere which is 10 to the power minus 3 multiplied by 20 kilo ohms 20 times 10 to the power 3 so that is equals to 20 volts that's very very straightforward so the initial voltage of the capacitor is 20 volts you can see how i did it you remove this source because what it doesn't exist before t is close to zero then of course you open circuit the capacitor because there's still a source right there's still a source and the capacitor acts as an open circuit to dc sources so next one is let's get the natural response and natural response is gotten after t is equal to zero right and of course we have to get a time constant which is rc and what's the r equivalent r equivalent is when we short the voltage source and open the current source so when we short this and open this what will be the r equivalent so this will be short this will be opened you can see that our r equivalent will still be 20 kilo ohms it will still be 20 kilo ohms why because 20 plus 80 is 100 100 will still be parallel to 25 kilo ohms and which, which will give us 20 kilo ohms so therefore we have 20 times 10 to power 3 and of course the capacitance is 5 microfarad 5 times 10 to power minus 6 so if we do that that will be 100 times 10 to power minus 3 which is same thing as what is 0.1 seconds so a natural response is equal to what v naught e raised to power minus t over tau which is same thing as v naught e raised to power minus 10 t because 1 over 0 0.1 is 10 so what of the first response the first response is very very simple the first response now for a first response this will turn into an open circuit right so it will just be like this but in this case the 10, 10 volts voltage source will be included so that's how we we'll get our first response so let's draw the circuit for that so for the first response we, have, we still have a 10 voltage source here 10 voltage source right then we have 25 kilo ohms and we have 20 kilo ohms on this side we have 80 kilo ohms here then we have an open circuit why because 
we have sources for the sec for the capacitor. Then we have one milliampere. One milliampere, which means that the current is going up, and we have plus minus here. This is twenty five kilo ohms. This is twenty kilo ohms, and this is eighty kilo ohms. So, how do we get our voltage? minus the first response that's also very simple what i will do here is i will perform source transformation so that this can all be in parallel so because once i know the once i know all of them are in parallel i know that each of them have the same voltage so once i get the voltage for one i've got seen the voltage for the capacitor itself so if i turn it to current source in parallel to 25 kilo ohms i is equals to v over r if you don't understand source transformation please go to our video on source transformation and you will understand better what source transformation is so we have 10 volts divided by 25 kilo ohms right so this will give me one over 2500 amperes amperes right this is 0 0.4 milli amperes so this is the current so if i redraw the circuit so i will have the 0 0.4 milliampere current source here then i will have the 25 kilo ohm resistor of course the open circuit then and of course i will have the 1 milliampere here 1 milliampere and of course if you can see we have 20 in series with 80 so it's done 100 so i'll just write draw it as 100 kilo ohms 100 kilo ohms 25 kilo ohms and we have 0 0.4 milliamperes so uh, combining sources together we are going to combine sources we have two current sources both of them are going up so which means that we have a total of 0 0.4 plus 1 which is 1.4 milliamperes if you don't understand combining sources please go to our initial videos and you understand how to combine sources and resistors so if i redraw that we have 1.4 milliamperes so it does not turn to just one uh, current source and i have 1.4 milliamperes right then i have the open so open circuit which has my voltage right and when if i combine the resistors what do i have i have 20 kilo ohms we've already done this before 25 parallel 100 so that's 20 kilo ohms so this is very very straightforward my vf will be equal to what 20 times 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 1.4 milliamperes so that will give 20 times 1.4 which is equals to 28 volts that's very very simple very very simple the first response is 28 volts the um, natural response is this right this is the natural response and the initial voltage right v of zero is equals to 20 volts so if i want to write the equation for the circuit i will say v is equals to the first response is 28 and the initial resp the natural response is equals to v naught e raised to power minus let's look at that again minus 10 t minus 10 t so right we know that our initial voltage is what 20 volts so i can get that so 20 is equals to 28 plus v naught e raised to power zero so which means that v naught is equals to 20 minus 28 which is equals to what minus 8 volts so if i write the equivalent response for the circuit it will be what v of t is equals to the first response is 28 and the natural response is minus 8 e raised to power minus 10 t voltage so this is the complete response for the circuit this is the complete response for the circuit i can 
say right now that with everything I've explained, you have an idea and you can solve circuits on RL and RC circuits. So brush up your uh, ordinary differential equations, know how to solve your natural response, your first response, know when it is driven or not, and you'll be fine. So that is the end of our first order circuit. Thank you very much for going through all the circuit analysis videos and we'll see later in our next videos and playlist. Thank you very much.